Prozent. How's right gear up, indicate airspeed. Heading 230. Close, close, close. at the airplane, uh, of course the flight engineer did, uh, proceeded to his walk around, all his outside checks. Uh, myself and the first officer, we came up to the uh, cockpit and uh, we were given all of our flight paperwork uh, uh, by the Cargo Lux representative. Uh, some of that paperwork is the, the weather, that's uh, all of our en route weather, uh, our destination weather, and our alternate weather. Uh, the weather we show uh, the wind is uh, calm, visibility more than six kilometers, and they have some broken clouds at 400 feet. Uh, temperature uh, four degrees in Iceland. Uh, then we have a look at that. Also, they have given us a computer flight plan. From this computer flight plan, uh, we have our fuel uh, and time uh, to Iceland. It's showing us five hours and three minutes. Uh, this is based on the current winds and uh, the, the altitudes. Uh, it shows our alternate airport as uh, Prestwick. Uh, it shows us one hour and uh, 55 minutes uh, to Prestwick. Then we have some holding fuel, 30 minutes of uh, 2,500 uh, kilos, uh, with a total fuel required of 84 tons. And then our, on to Hopedale, uh, which is in Newfoundland, uh, to our oceanic crossing uh, entrance point, which was Prawn. Then from Prawn, our flight plan uh, takes us to 62 north and 50 west, and then 64 north and 40 west, 64 north and 30 west, and direct to uh, Keflavik. So based on all that, we, make, we made the takeoff. We climbed up to 33,000 feet. Iceland has advised us that a fog has moved in, which was uh, not forecasted. Uh, the visibility is down to 200, uh, 300 meters. Uh, the, that's the horizontal visibility. The vertical visibility is zero. Uh, of course, as we stated before, uh, when we started off from Detroit uh, with the destination of Iceland and Keflavik, uh, we had an alternate of Prestwick. Uh, we've checked the Prestwick weather uh, the Prestwick weather is uh, wind is out of the east at eight knots. Visibility is more than 10 kilometers. Uh, and they have some scattered clouds at 1,200 feet. Uh, and their temperature is uh, one degree and their weather is forecasted to be real good. So what we're going to do is, is continue uh, to Prestwick. Uh, the, the weather in Iceland has deteriorated below our minimums. Uh, which is 550 meters. Uh, so we will just continue on to our alternate, which is Preston. In situations like the one we're facing now, it is important that the captain and his crew have proper support from their flight watch in Luxembourg. One of the duties of the flight dispatcher who is manning the desk is flight watch. Flight watch, we understand, is that he is looking after weather and no temps while the flight is en route and advises the crew of any changes. Now, if you are having a flight into Keflavik and the weather would go dramatically down, he would notify the flight or the crew on board and help them take the decision whether the flight is to land or try to land at the destination or help him with the diversion, which means notify him that he can divert and give him the weather for his diversion airport.
It is Tuesday, May 4th, 1993. We're at Boeing Field, and shortly, Boeing will experience yet another first. 24 years after the first 747 took to the air, the latest version of the Jumbo is ready for its maiden flight. The new 747-400 freighter arrived almost three tons lighter than predicted. It uses 15% less fuel than the Dash 200, which was already among the most efficient of the older type. November 6005 Charlie, which is the registration used for the certification tests, is already back from its first flight. Another flawless achievement for Boeing. Cargo Lux is the first airline in the world to receive delivery of and place into service the Dash 400 freighter. In fact, Cargo Lux will receive the first three aircraft built, including Boeing's prototype, which we will fly today. Join us for a flight to San Francisco on the top-of-the-line Boeing We have collected some spectacular scenery on this trip, including an overflight of the Rockies. Witness a dramatic view of the Golden Gate and a low visibility landing at San Francisco. see all that and much more as Captain Lofson and his crew take us for an 11 hour and 20 minute flight on board the city of Edelbrook from Luxembourg to San Francisco.